Matthew twenty-two thirty-six says, the "Lawyer came to Jesus, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law?" Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second, so that implies that that was the first. He said, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang, fastens, attaches, hinges, kind of like a door hinge. Got two door hinges. He says, on these two commandments hang all. All the law and the prophets. So you and I can summarize all the law and the prophets like unto this door to my left. You look at the door that's summarizing all the law and the prophets, but those two law and the prophets hang on two commandments. Wow, that's pretty impressive to me. You can kind of See, I like consolidation. You can consolidate. It makes it easier for me to understand. He said you can consolidate it on those two commandments. Jude 1, verses 16. Well, let's start at verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking, speaketh great swelling words. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Or the days, the last days. Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep, somebody shall keep, yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep, somebody shall keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. I want to preach to you today from the topic of Keep yourselves in the love of God. You can be seated. All the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments there. Jesus told that lawyer, love the Lord with everything. Second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. It seems that that's where it all starts. with loving God with everything that we have. But when you start thinking about it and asking the Lord to help you, it can't really start with that. Why, Pastor? Because 
if it starts with me loving God with everything that I have, then essentially I'm saying it starts with me. I am now saying that even if I don't want to say it, I am the origin of why I am saved. Now, Jesus did say that. All the law and the prophets hang on loving God with everything that you have, basically, and loving your neighbor as yourself. But John, the apostle, said, I love him because he first loved So now then, it, there is a prerequisite before the love that I love God with everything that I have and then love my neighbor. So the foundation, and it makes more sense to me that the foundation is now not my love for him, but I only love him with everything that I have because only when I realize how much he loves me. And then you can introduce the door and the hinges. But the door and the hinges is not the beginning. Because God is the beginning. And when I realize how much he loves me, I then begin to enter into the door part. Now I can love God with everything that I have because I realize he loved me with everything that he had. And then I can now love my neighbor with everything that I have because I got to love my neighbor as I love myself. So the foundation of the love, am I making any sense this morning? The foundation of love is not me. It doesn't start with me. It does not start with you. It instead starts with God. I love him because he first loved me. And then because I love him, well, because he first loved me, I then love him with everything that I have. So his love for me is first. My love for him is second then I can only truly love me once I love him. I can't love me if I don't love him. People in the world are trying to love themselves and it's not love or they're trying to find love, but you will never find love if you don't first love God first. You'll never love yourself. You cannot love yourself. It is impossible to love who you are. You'll always have an identity crisis. You'll never know which way to turn. You'll always try to fit in, but you really don't. The be, reason why is because you don't really love. And the reason why you don't really love him is because you don't know how much he loves you. But if you ever got a revelation of how much he loves you, it would be so easy to love him back. And then it would be so easy to truly love you and accept who you are. Even when people told you and wrote you off and said negative about you, you still, still wouldn't matter. I love that song. I think it's old man Jonathan something, but he says, even with the pimples on my face, you keep loving me. You know what he's saying? He's saying, you know what? He, he's saying, you know what? It really, I used to be insecure, and all of us got pimples in some way or form or fashion. He said, I used to be insecure about my face and my look before I loved God, but now that I know how much he loved me, now I can love him with everything, and now I can love me with everything, and even though I got pimples, and even though I ain't got it right, I, it really don't matter because I'm loved already. I'm not looking for acceptance from you or the world. I'm loved already. Am I making any sense on this, on this morning? You see, let's keep going over this. We got to get this. 
his foundation. He loves me. He loves you. He loves us. Now I can love him with everything. Then I can love me because he said love your neighbor. He didn't say love your neighbor. Just, he said love your neighbor as yourself. So that suggests that I've got to love me before I love my neighbor. Stop trying to get in a relationship with somebody when you don't even know who you are yet. You'll never be able to love your spouse. You'll never be able to love somebody if you don't love you first. You can't even accept you and you're trying to get married. You, you can't even accept you and you're trying to... You're trying to lead people and you can't even accept who you are. Sit down and let God love you first. Sit down and realize who you are. Sit down and once you get a revelation of who you are, then you can love your neighbor. Even whenever they're cursing you out. Oh yeah, you heard me, right? See, some of y'all rolling your eyes because you think, Pastor, I don't know. Well, that's because you don't know how much he loves you. Because if you knew how much he loved you, then now you would love him back. And then you, oh my God. And then you would love you. And then you wouldn't have a problem with loving your neighbor because it, it really ain't about them anyway you're still smiling at people because you're like you know what I love God more and I don't want to let him down by cursing you out or punching you in the mouth so I'm just gonna just smile because I don't want to it's not about you baby it's not about you it's about me not, not getting out of my place that he put me in Hello, somebody. You see, once I realize how much he loves me, then I can love him back. I can love him with everything. Okay? So I'm not trying to love me before, before I love him. I got to love him first. Hallelujah. And then he loves me. Then I love me, or, or excuse me, I realize he loves me. Then I love him back with everything. And then I can love me. I hope y'all writing this down. This is some good stuff to write down. You just get an order and make a checklist every morning. Okay, do I realize something? Some of you need to put it on your mirror. And you need to write it on your mirror. You need to write it on your Bible or something and put yourself a checklist. Today, do I realize how much God loves me? Okay, okay, number two. Well, then because he loved me, just think about number one. Let me backtrack. Oh, he died for me on the cross. He loved me, gave me everything. He came down from heaven and shed his blood. He would let nothing stop him from getting to me and pursuing me. I was his lost child. He loved me. He came to seek and save that which was lost. Come on, he laid down his life for his friends. Greater love had no man than this, that a man would lay down his own life for his friends. I am the apple of his eye. Checklist number one. You need to wake up every morning with that in mind. I am the apple of his eye. He doesn't love the angels like he loved me. He don't love a dog like me. He don't love the donkey like he I am his number one thing. You are his number one prize. God, what can separate me from the love of God? You got to talk to yourself sometimes. You got to encourage yourself sometimes. Some of y'all ain't talking back to me, but that's all right. I just come to preach the love of God. This is in my spirit. Hallelujah. This is what the spirit is saying. So I got number one checklist. I realize how much God loves me. Okay. Who, when I see that love, what would I want? What will I not do for him? What will I not do for him? It's like my wife. You know, once my wife realizes how much I love her, there's really nothing she won't do for me. I raise it. Husbands, you got to love your wife as Christ loved the church. <laughs> some of you want to, oh, God, why you got me? God got me into this. Oh, my Lord. You see, some of you wanting, uh, you, some, some of you wanting, you know, I want that love back. Hold on, well, just love first. Love first. And then, oh, in return, hallelujah. In return, hallelujah. She's going to love you. And there's nothing that she won't do for you because she realizes how much you love her. Well, it's the same thing. That's why God correlates the church and himself with marriage. He said, you know what? I gave myself to you. And because I gave myself, 
yourself to you. I know now there's nothing that you won't do for me. So that's why I get up and pray. That's why I skip certain things because there's certain things that I don't want to displease my father with. I'm willing to please him. I love him because he first loved me. See how that works now? Okay. Now that I realize he loves me, I can love him. Then I can realize love God can love me because I realize he don't make mistakes. Some people try to change themselves. Why? Because they don't know God. That's why it's important to know God first and his love first. Because once you know his perfect love, cast out all fear, his love is perfect, then you know, okay, he can't make no mistakes. Well, he made me then, and I can't be a mistake. I know I might not get it right all the time. I'm preaching better than y'all responding, but I'm going to preach anyway. Hallelujah. He said that once you realize you, hallelujah, that he's perfect and he can't make no mistake then I'm going to just accept me and love me even when other folk don't love me I know he saw the best in me when everybody else around me saw the worst in me So now I can love me with pimples on my face. I got to tell somebody, you ain't too short. You ain't too black. You ain't too white. You ain't too skinny. Hallelujah. God loves you the way that you are. I'm preaching the truth to you today. <laughs> then I can love my neighbor as myself. <laughs> how can you love, as a Christian, how can you love your neighbor as yourself? The world says, Evil for evil. I have I had two for two. That's the word say. Did, do, word say they did it to you, do it to them. That's what the word say. The reason I can love my neighbor, let me let me help you out there. The reason as a Christian I can love my neighbor is because I love me. See? And I know. Well, you say your neighbor ain't perfect. Neither am I. It's the hypocrites in the world that say, I got it all together, but you messing up. You fake, you fake, you fake. I'm the only one real. Sit yourself down before God exposes your record. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But when you realize he loves you anyway, you're going to love your neighbor as you love you because you know you was a wretch and you was ratchet and you was messed up and God loved you. So if God can love me and I can learn to love me, then I think I can love my neighbor who messes up sometimes. Yeah. Woo. Woo, man, this is great preaching. And it's not because I'm preaching it. I'm just telling you, it's great preaching. <laughs> oh, it's the Holy Ghost. So, so, you see how that works? God loves us. We love him with everything we have. We love us, then we love our neighbor. Okay, you got that. Now, why is it that Jude says in verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God? Because Jude understood as someone, a part of the early church, that the focus should not be just on us loving him with everything we have. Because we are flawed. And that's where legalism comes in at. Because legalism says, you know, we'll keep a bunch of rules. Legalism says, it's up to you and dependent on you.
But if it would have started there, then that's legalism. But Jude said, it don't start with you, and it won't end with you. If you're going to go all the way with Jesus, how many of y'all focus on going all the way? If you're going to go all the way with Jesus, if you want to go all the way with Jesus, you better not put your focus on just you. You better go back to the foundation and keep yourselves in the love of God because it all starts with the love of God. So on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, whenever you're having a hard time, you just go back to the love of God. Because as I demonstrated to you, when you go back to the basic and the love of God, oh, my God. You see, loving God with everything you have and loving your neighbor as yourself are the hinges for the law and the prophets, the door. That's the door. But let me tell you, the love of God is the floor. She caught it. The love of God is the floor. It's the foundation. That's just the door. Some of y'all need to stop looking at the door and start looking at the floor. He is the foundation. His love ought to be the foundation for everything that we do. And let me tell you who knows that. Some, a lot of saints don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. But let me tell you who else knows it. The devil knows it. The devil knows it. You want to know what that word keep means? Before I tell you what that word keep means, sometimes we pray this. Oh, God, keep me. Keep me. And you know, sometimes we can use prayer inadvertently at times as an excuse. What do I mean by that? Here's what I mean by that. Oh, God, keep me. Oh, God, keep me. And it sounds like a really good prayer to pray. And it may be at some times. But I want to give you some, some insight. I started reading through the Bible and reading through the concordance of every time the word keep is used. And I started seeing a trend. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's wrong to pray that, you know, God... But this, I'm telling you, I'd rather play, pray biblically, correctly. This is what I, I, I started seeing, this stuff like Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, we want to throw the responsibility on God because we're too lazy to keep ourselves. And so we pray, oh God, keep me, keep me, keep me. Get out of his presence and go do what we want to do. But Jesus said, if you love me, I ain't going to be doing the keeping. You do the keeping. If you love me, keep my commandments. He said in another place, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. He said in another place, verily, verily, I say, he said, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. So now we have been told that we are to do the keeping. Not God. It's my responsibility, Brother Brock, to do the keeping. I've got to keep myself. And that's why Jude followed it up. And Jude said, church, keep yourselves. God's not going to do the keeping. We ought to do the keeping. We are told to do the keeping. Keep yourselves where? In the love of God. Now, here's what this word keep means. To watch. Watch yourselves in the love of God. Don't watch yourself out of the love of God. Don't watch what the world is doing. Don't watch what other people is doing. Watch yourselves in the love of God. 
This is how we ought to be. If, if, this, if, this, if this little square rectangular thing is the love of God, this is what we ought to be doing. Making sure my foot didn't get off of it. Okay, it's right here. Watching, I'm watching. Watch yourselves in the love of God. It also means to guard from loss or injury. To guard from loss or injury. So I, you and I have a responsibility to guard. Who comes to make us lose? Who comes to injure us? Who am I ought to be guarding against? Not only the devil, but myself, the flesh, the world. Really, you can sum it all up in three. We have three enemies. Self, Satan and his kingdom, and the world. So I ought to be guarding myself from loss and injury. In other words, the devil, I ought to be guarding myself from every lie, what he tells. Let me tell you, the reason why somebody's going to backslide, I've never seen a backslider. They might say it with their mouth, but they don't really believe it because it's impossible. I've never seen a backslider know that God still loved them. Because a person who really knows God loves them is going to be in God. Because you realize, because again, remember the result? What's the result? And once I realize he loves me, I love him with everything I have. A backslider don't do that. So the first thing that was taken was the love of God from them. That's why Jude said you better keep yourself in the love of God. You can come to church and you can look the part and you can do all of that and call yourself. But God knows your heart and inside you're like dead men's bones because you don't love because you don't realize how much God loves you. And the first the reason why anybody will ever backslide, the only first reason why somebody will ever leave God and leave the church is because they're not convinced how much God loves them. Because we already went through what that will produce. So that's why Jude said, man, they got scoffers, they got mockers. He said, but you got to guard against that voice that says, God don't love you. God's not going to forgive you. You went too far. You know what you did. That's trying to lose, cause us to lose, Brother Brown. That's trying to injure us, trying to get it to lose the love of God. Where, well, hold on. How is it that some people who preach this gospel I'm preaching, mighty men and women of God, preached and sang and lived for God, and you thought would never fall, now they can't find the love of God. Ever couldn't find your keys or your phone? Now, now you're living for God. Oh, you're living for him, but you can't find his love. You're going through the motions now. You're sitting on the pew, but you can't find his love. You can find fault in everybody else because that's, you know, you can't find his love. That's why Jude said, guard yourself from loss. I'm looking for his love. Well, you started out good, but I'm looking for his love. But what happened? You didn't guard yourself from injury or from loss or injury. The devil took it. I lost the love of God. When I first got to church, I was on the front pew. I was, I was, oh, oh man, yo, God loves me so much. I know how much he loves me. But then I go through a little trial and, you know, I start falling into condemnation. And my jump is not as high and my shout is not as loud and my I, I, I forget about my shout and my jump in church, you know. I, I used to live for God away from church, you know, behind closed doors. But now I'm, I'm doing things I ought not to do. With, and, 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 and now I'm, I'm coming. And yeah, you know, that's good. But, you know, as far as his love, I don't feel like he loves me. The devil has stolen it from you, friend. That's why Jude said, keep yourselves in the love of God. Guard against loss or injury. 
Some of you are ex-sports people. You know what an injury is. You don't have to be a sports person to know what an injury is. An injury hurt, sprained my ankle. I can't. Got hit. I'm injured. You have to keep yourself from from injury. Now you got an injury, sprained my ankle. I can't walk as straight no more. Some of you wonder why you're not walking as straight and narrow. Because you're injured in the area of the love of God. Because see, when you realize how much he loves you, there's nothing you won't do for him. You're going to stay away from temptation. You're going to dodge the world. You're going to stay away from sin. The reason why you're still sinning is because you don't know. You don't know. You, you lost the revelation of how much he loves you. So he told the church. He said, oh, well, let me tell you, the heart's desperately wicked above everything. You can sit there and say, well, I love God. The Bible calls you a liar. You don't even know. I don't even know what I'm talking about when I think in my own way. There is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is death. So I don't judge myself by what I think I know. I let the scriptures judge what I know or don't know. I might feel a certain way. And let me tell you, feelings are up and down, my friend. They're up and down like a heart monitor or whatever. They're up and down. Down one moment, up the next. Up and down. I don't go by feeling. You ought not go by feeling. You ought to go by what the word of God says and declares because he knows our hearts and he alone knows us. That's why I try not to make decisions of great worth when I'm happy or down. I might be happy one day. I might have got a blessing one day and I'm happy. I try not. Don't ever, don't ever make a decision like that. Because what you've done is you've allowed the way you feel, whether good or bad, to dictate. Those things will dictate your decision making. Always make a decision when you're away from your feelings, high or low, in the middle. I'm giving you wisdom. Never make a decision when you're low and you're down. Because the devil will take that and make you do something low. Because according to how you're feeling is what you'll do. Give yourself a little time. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto eternal life. Then you can love others. That's why he talks about verse 22. I'm telling you, God loves you. Don't ever let the devil. You got to guard against injury or loss. And then it also means keeping the eye upon. Keep. Tell me what keep means here. Keep your eye upon the love of God. I know you're talking to me, but I can't hear you. I'm not supposed to. I gotta keep my, I can't get distracted by the world. I hear the world on my left saying, look at what we got over here. It's just the devil. I hear self saying, look at what we got over here. You start listening enough, you trying to do two things. But Jesus said, no man putting his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. We can't have looking at the love of God and at the world at the same time. You cannot do it. Hear me? You can't do it. You can't do it. You will fall. You got to keep your eye on the prize. 
That's what it means. Keep your eye upon the love of God. Every morning I'm going to wake up and realize how much God loves you. Man, I, I might feel low. I might not have no money in the bank. My friends might have forsook me. The, the, the dog might be cursing that man, not, 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 not like me today. But I know somebody who loves me. I said, I know somebody who loves me. I said, I know somebody who still loves me. Even whenever I feel down, broke, busted, and disgusted. I know that I know that I know that I know and I better know that God loves me. Because if I ever get my eye off of it, that devil's going to slam me. I can't lose it. I, gotta keep, I can't lose this revelation of one God. I can't lose this revelation of, 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 of how much he loves me. I can't lose this revelation of love because if I ever lose it, I might not find it again. Or it might take me some time to find it. Talk to a backslider. What was it? Sunday? Yesterday. He said, man, I ran from God. But he's back in church now. Praise God for that. But he, he was away from God for a long time. He said, I got bitter. He said, I got bitter. Start telling me about it. He lost the love of God. Thank God he found it. The Bible says a root of, let me preach about this. The root of bitterness will spring up in you and defile you. Bitterness is something. Whether you get bitter with the man of God, you get bitter with the woman of God, you get bitter with your brother or your sister, you get bitter with people who are not even saved. That thing is going to take a root in you deeper than you realize and you'll ever know. And the Bible says it's going to stay there and spring. And the Bible says it's going to spring up and defile many. We got bitter. Bitterness is a, a dangerous thing. Let it go. He got bitter, but he lost the love of God. And again, I'm thankful he found it. But it took him about 15 years to find it again. I'm time it take you just a long time. You've been looking for it. Straight down. It's like lo losing something and forgot you lost it. And then be strolling one day and then find it. You don't want that to happen to you. Keep your eyes on the love of God. How do you stay living for God? Pastor's going to tell you. Keep your eye on the love of God. I don't care what happens. I really don't care what happens. I can name some bad situations it don't matter keep your eye on because that don't change his love for you things are going to change and i'm not saying bad things don't happen to people i'm sure they do and i know they do but that doesn't change the fact that he loves me and that's the way that i'm staying saved by keeping my eye on him i'm not saying you won't hurt i'm not saying you won't cry you will but don't forget keep your eye on the love of God. <laughs> we like to quote verse 24. I'm, I'm done preaching. Verse 24. We, 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 like to quote, we like to quote. Now in the hymn that is able to keep you from falling. Look, Pastor, the Bible says he's going to keep me. Yeah. But verse 24 came after verse 21. And in verse 21, he instructed you and me to keep ourselves and God said, when you learn to keep you, I'm going to keep you. Whenever you learn to take one step to God, I'm going to draw nigh back to you. But don't expect me to go first. Whenever you keep yourself and say, I'm going to be safe, God said, I'm going to back you. I'm going to keep you from falling because you want to be kept. I'm done preaching, but you ought to learn to keep yourself in the love of God. Come on, I'll make an invitation to you today. Come on, to come and keep yourself. Come and keep yourself. I invite you to this altar today. 